Welcome to No Nodes, a new series where I'm going to be going through every single default node inside of Nuke. And not just give it a peripheral, but actually show it in action. So I'm going to try very hard to bring forth the production workflows of the nodes. Anybody can introduce a, a node, but how does that node work in production? When is it used most likely in production? And we're talking about application. We're not talking about just, uh, hey, here's what it does. Yeah, but why would you do that? So we're going to start actually a little bit further down the pipeline here. And I went to uh, what is probably, in my opinion, the most uh, most needed to understand, which is all of the time plugins, as you can see here. So we've got Oflow, Kronos, Temporal Media, and Time Blur. We're going to start at the top and move our way down, then I'll move on to other shelves. But as of right now, we're going to start with Add 3-2 Pull Down. So I'll throw that one on. This one doesn't take long to understand. I got this shot of a dog here we did for VFX. And we were trying to get the dog not to move, but uh, yeah, good luck with that. Uh, he kept looking back and forth at the different cast members and crew members, so we had to get them out of the shot. So as you can see here, we put a little tracking down on it. That's not what we're concerned with right now. And this was shot at 24 frames per second, or 23976. And sometimes you got to convert that to 30 frames per second for whatever reason. Well, obviously, you know, when it comes down to that, you know, roughly 23976, uh, is going to require more frames because you have more frames to play at a certain frame rate. You can see my current settings are set to 24 frames per second. If I go ahead and just play this clip through, you can see the dog turning his head from uh, left to right. So if we switch this over to, and just grab it right here if we wish, add 3-2 three three pull down, which is, I have one right here, um, it's basically going to take every uh, four frames and make them five frames. That's what the 3-2 pull-down does, and it also changes the speed. So if I play that same clip now, you can go ahead and see that he seems a little bit slower because we have more frames now in the shot. If I key through these with my arrow key, one, two, three, four, you'll notice there's a doubling up of a frame here. So we can kind of go through it, one, two, three, four, and then the fifth frame is duplicated, one, two, three, four, and then the fifth, fr fourth frame is duplicated. So you can see there is a doubling up of a frame every four frames, okay? And that frame gets repeated as the fifth frame. So this is a process of taking 23976 over to 29976. Now, as you can see, if we play it, it's relatively slow, right? Well, that's because we're playing it at 24 frames per second. If I hit S for settings, and just roughly throw this at 30. I can go 29,976 if I want to. You can now see that the clip will play, play correctly and the right speed. Um, but there is this slightly jarring reality of there being double frames every four frames. So just be aware of that. It does give you the, the transformation, but is required to add some frames to it. Obviously, the other reverse of this process is taking away a frame every four frames. And that is right over here, which is remove 3-2 three, three, pull down, which we can actually do is convert this back, as you can see here, and it's doing the exact op uh, opposite operation of that. Uh, so just be aware of that. Now, because we've lost frame, or we've added frames, we're taking away frames, but we're still probably going to get a doubling up of some frames here. But you can see the speed here is going to be like really quick now. So I'm going to have to go ahead and put this back to... 24 frames per second. And now the speed at which this moves should be the same as, it, as the original clip. So here is the transformed and here is the original. So you can see one's a little bit more jarring because it actually had a clip, but the general speeds um, again are just the conversion here. Now we do have this add. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. We have a, fr uh, a phase in here which offsets things by uh, what, fra uh, what specific frame will actually get duplicated. So you can see if I put this to one, two, three, or move it around, it's offsetting the frame. So if there's a specific frame that you don't want to double up, you can go ahead and just offset this by one frame, and it won't have that specific frame be re uh, reset up. So you're just offsetting the frame, and that goes for the add and the remove. All right, now moving on to the next fun little clip, which is the append. <clears throat> so the append clip is rather confusing if you don't understand what in the world it does. So here I have a couple of clips here. I have a uh, roto here, uh, I'll putting RGBA of a uh, roto shape, 
and we have basically three circles. If I merge these all together, uh, we can see in the time frame, which I have to 1 to 100, that from frames 0 to 25, we have animation. So this is the same animation, both pieces basically coming down, and that's it. What is commonly done with this is blending together like explosions and so forth, and uh, it's just a simple blending crossfade type tool, okay? And that's what you can use. You can, if you were building a series of sparks and explosions and you wanted to have a whole bunch of clips of different types of sparks and explosions, sort of like following one after the other and cross dissolving into one another, you can use this. What is commonly used is a frame range uh, in the clip. Now, these clips don't have a frame range yet. Uh, they're just in here with the full frame range, but I'm limiting them to 1 to 25, which is their animation, as you can see here. So this one moves at 125, and then the two frames here, 125, and the same with the blue. So remember, the animation is from frames 1 to 25. So now, this append to clip, let's go ahead and take a look at it. <clears throat> it has a fade in, a fade out, a cross dissolve, a first frame, and this thing called the last frame, which you never get access to. It's only dictating or telling you the end of all these transitions and all these clips ends at this specific frame, all right? So you can have multiple inputs here. You can do one, two, and three. You can keep going with this. This will change uh, everything, including your last frame. So let's first just use one input. So I'm going to plug in the one input to this. And if we kind of take a look at it, it says the first frame is one. And what this first frame is, is basically a hold. So it's saying hold the image frozen in time until this frame. So you can see if I go ahead and just play this through, you know, the animation's just playing through like usual. But I can come in here and put this ahead to, you know, 25 uh, frames. And what it's doing is it's frame freezing the image until it kicks in with its animation. It's almost like a frame offset. So I'm going to put this back to, I'll just put this to zero here. And there's a couple other options here. And you'll notice if you kind of hover over, it does give you some information. So if I come over here and just hover, you'll see it sets the number of frames to fade in from black on the first clip in the sequence. The key word there is the first clip. If I have multiple clips in here, okay, it's talking about the fade in of the first clip, okay? So if I plug this in here, obviously this is the first clip because it's the first, you know, it's the only input. Um, I can say fade in five frames, all right? So at frame zero, it's fading in five frames. Like we can physically count this, you know, one, two, three, four, five, you know, and then it stays there, okay? You also have frame out, okay? Now, these don't really, uh, unless you have multiple inputs, they don't really work well in this circumstance, because if I say fi a fade in and fade out to five, you'll see what happens here. We'll go ahead and play it, and it stops. Now, what it did was it took the frame range of 1 to 25, the animation of this frame, and it basically took the first five frames faded in and the last five frames faded it out, all right? So you can change that up. You can go ahead and put this to, I don't know, make this, uh, let's try two and two. And I highly recommend you experiment with these just so you can understand. So I can go ahead and hit play, and you can see it just takes two frames to cross dissolve out. The cross dissolve will not really have anything to do with anything unless you actually have multiple inputs uh, dealing with here. But in all things, again, you have your first frame, all right? So again, fade in, just to repeat, will take the first input, okay, and fade it in. Fade out tells you that it's going to take the last clip in the sequence, or the last input, and fade it out, all right, by how many frames. The first frame in this, again, just circumstance, I'll show you one more time. I'll put it 10 frames ahead. It just offsets it, freezes it for 10 frames. So if I go ahead and hit play, there you go. So we go 10 minute frames in, clip fades in by two specific frames, plays out its full 25 frames animation, the last two frames of that 25 uh, animation are going to fade out by two frames. Now here's where the fun begins. And like I said, you never change this last frame here. You can see it's 34 frames. Well, what does that mean? Well, if you take a look, we have how many frames ahead? We've basically given it 10 frames, and the animation was how many frames? 25, right? 25, 24, you know, with zero counting. So if you take 10 plus 24, unit rate, you get 34. 
So again, you can just see how this all plays a part in dictating your last frame. So again, you can just see if I offset this by 20 frames, it'll add some more frames there. So now it's 44 frames. So it's 20 plus the 24, which gives you 44, okay? Now, let's start to play with these other inputs here. Or I'm going to first set these uh, defaults all back to zero, and I'll put the frame first frame set to zero. We're going to start plugging in the other inputs. Let's start with just two inputs while we're at it. So now if I play this through, it pops immediately to the next clip, okay? So once this sequence ends, which has 24 frames of animation, or its frame range is set to 24, it's going to pop to the next clip, and then the animation of that 24 frames, 25 frames or whatever that was here, is now moved up to here. See that? Now, you can see the total frames that we have of the whole sequence with everything set to default is basically 50 or 49. So again, it's basically 25 plus 25, which gives you 50 um, and so forth. Um, it takes away a frame because we're, we're off by one single frame here. Uh, we're starting at zero. Again, we could start at one if you want to go to one. So I could do the first frame set to one. And now you can see we have an equal 50 frames with 25 frames per animation on each clip. If, again, I, I go ahead and just uh, plug in the third one, watch the last frame change. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. And now we have 75 frames. What is 25 times 3? Remember your quarters, folks. So anyway, you can see here that these three clips play through like this. Now, if we come to the cross dissolve, we can actually come in here and add a cross dissolve of five frames. Now, watch the last frames, or at least the full sequence of frames when, this, when I change this. It is now shorter. It is now 65 frames. It is short by a total of 10 frames from what I showed last time. And why is that? Because there is a f cross uh, dissolve animation that the animation is starting during the dissolve for five frames in between inputs one and two and five frames between inputs two and three. So now if you can take a look, I'll go ahead and just play it through. You can see what's going on there that the green guy is actually getting a head start uh, by five frames. So his animation starts right here as this starts to fade out, whereas before it was at 25 when it started its full animation from the top to bottom. So if we play this through, you can see how this works. So depending on your cross dissolve will dictate the last frame. So if I choose a, a cross dissolve of just, well, let's go with 10 frames, right? Now we have the last frame being 55 frames completed because, again, the green circle gets a head start very early in the game, which gives a leeway for the blue guy to get a head start. And then we just basically get, you know, basically have less frames of animation going on here. Again, you can crossfade uh, explosions, fire, smoke, um, and then you can kind of put those on cards if you wish and throw them in a 3D scene inside of uh, Nuke. Uh, you know, for instance, we just got finished watching Stranger Things 3 with that amazing ending. I won't get into it, but it does involve explosions. Um, spoilers. So anyway, so that's pretty much it. And then the fade in, the fade out will not affect the last frame input. So I can do a five frame of fade in. So now if I go ahead and just come over here, it fades in the first input. Okay, because that's what it is. And then we just get to the end. And then finally, I could do a fade out of a five. Okay. So imagine if you had fireworks or something in this shot, and then they're just, a, you know, explosion, fireworks go off, sparks. Maybe it's sparks on a machine that's exploding. You can basically build up a little animation funhouse here with that, and then card that onto a card and put them in a 3D scene, or just actually have them two-dimensionally tracked into a shot uh, the old traditional way. Uh, so again, you can see you can offset all this if you wish by just this. This is simply just moving the whole animation ahead. So I can choose 10 frames for that. That's going to add more frames to my last frame. And you can see that I can go through. There's a pause there. Now notice there's a pause, but it's just basically black because it needs to fade in. And then finally we get to the end, which according to this is frame 64. So you can see 64, and it's, it's gone. 64 is the last remaining frame of something before hitting 65, where it fades completely to black. And finally, you have this take metadata from first clip. And we talked about previously about metadata before, but by default, uh, it's always going through. This is going to be the, the metadata is going to be taken uh, from the input currently taking precedence. 
So that would probably be the, my, I think it's the third one. I uh, could be wrong on that one, um, but it's just basically choosing whatever the last input in will will kind of override all of the uh, metadata that's coming in. So that's just a simple metadata management system that you kind of work through. And that's pretty much it, folks, and I hope that helps you understand. Again, application-wise, I don't have explosions or fires or anything that you could possibly uh, you know, show as an example for this, uh, but you can very easily understand the application of this, and I hope that helps. So keep an eye out. If you guys would like to download this script, I have it on my Patreon. It's not very complicated, really, but in future episodes, I will have the scripts available on Patreon. So if you're a Patreon supporter um, and, uh, you know, you, if you do support me through whatever tier it is, uh, uh, you can go ahead and download these scripts and these files and zip files. Um, otherwise, this is just, again, just something you can look at for free on your own uh, to examine and learn from. So we got a whole bunch of nodes coming down the pipe, and I'm going to try to not just show you how to use a node, but show it within an application of use. So I hope you guys enjoy this, and again, see you next time.